Hi, I'm Jack Gill. I was a stunt coordinator on Fast Five. And I'm going to do a one scene breakdown of the infamous vault chase in Fast Five. I started out as a stunt person. I really enjoyed doing the high falls and doing all the car wrecks and all the motorcycle wrecks. And then as you get older, you're in a boardroom with a lot of people who don't really know action telling you to your face that I don't think you can do that. And then you, you bring it to the screen, that's where the real enjoyment for me is, is to be able to see something on the screen that they told you you couldn't do. The vault chase was easily the, our biggest chase in the entire film. So at the opening of this bit, we've got Vin and Paul in their chargers, and they've got cables attached to a vault. They're gonna pull the vault through a cement wall and then carry it down through this parking garage and out the front to exit. This is a breakaway wall, obviously, that we're pulling our vault through. And these cables are real cables that go to, but what you don't see on the bottom is we put Delron, which is a really thick plastic, on the bottom of the vault here so that it would slide easier. The problem we found out with the Delron is once you get the vault moving, it doesn't want to stop. So we had to take the Delron off once we got out onto the street because once the vault started sliding right and left, we never could stop it. This entire square here was all breakaway wall. This was on a stage. Once you see the vault leave that frame, then we're back in a real environment. We brought the vault out of this underground parking garage at speed in our first shot, made the right-hand turn, and tumbled the vault across this whole section you see out here. And we were just guessing as to where that thing would tumble. But that is a real 9,000-pound vault tumbling across all of these cement posts that we put in. We had about two of these real steel 9,000-pound vaults, two of the driving vaults, and two of the semi-vaults, which we'll talk about later. Like I said, it started with Delron plastic to make it slide easier on the inside. What you see here is it's just sliding on steel, titanium, so that we could create sparks out both sides. It was an intricate and tricky little piece because if one of the chargers turns early, he picks up a piece of the safe and that makes the other charger not be able to pick up his end of it. So they have to have complete tightness on the cables from both chargers at all times. The idea behind the dolly track and the camera being that close to where we knew it was gonna crash was that you want the audience to feel that rush in their face. And that's the thing that really makes the difference in a Fast and Furious movie is that the audience wants to feel that they're part of this chase. And if you can't get the cameras in close enough to the action coming right to your face, you've lost them. What you will see in this shot is something we like to do in all of Fast and Furious is, is we like to put people in the foreground. And you see this stunt guy right here. Now he's gotta watch that safe. If the cables break, it's coming right for him. And then there's another stunt guy out here. We've got pedestrians here and here and crossing in front of camera. You'll see them go right and left. And that gives us the feel that there are people on the streets and it's dangerous. This is a completely different setup for us. What we did is we took all the pedestrians that were in danger out of the way. And we said, bring this thing around the corner as fast as you can bring it, just so we have speed. We knew we couldn't put any stunt people, you know, anywhere over here because it's a dangerous spot. Oh, you have to be careful about each and every one of these shots. And when you see it in the cut, you, because you've seen all those people in the foreground of the cut before that, your eye doesn't miss all them in this one because it's, it's such a quick cut. In this scene, we knew we wanted to tie in a child in the foreground looking out and seeing the vault being pulled by two chargers. Here's what we did is we took the bus out of it. We drug the vault, the real vault, around two or three times till we got the shot we wanted with our other cameras. And then we put the bus back in. And this little girl you see here is Justin Lin, our first unit director's daughter. And we shot over her and we pulled another vault past it again. But we didn't pull the 9,000 pound vault past her. We pulled another vault past her that we had a hidden pickup truck 
inside the vault. And I know that's a little tough to understand because a pickup truck's pretty big. But what I did is I took a pickup truck and I cut the entire middle half out of it from the back of the front wheels to the front of the back wheels. We took that out and we welded it back together. So all it has is an engine, front wheels and back wheels and a seat. And that's essentially it. And then we fit it down inside of the vault and then we gave him steering wheels and we got this thing about Eh, about an inch off the ground so that he could actually swing it around the corner and drive it extremely close to this bus without endangering anybody. What we didn't really know was that the truck sitting inside of an enclosed vault creates heat. We knew it would be hot. We didn't know it was going to be 190 degrees in there. So the stunt guy that was in there started passing out on us. So let's bring in dry ice and put it all on top of the uh, steering wheel, in front of the steering wheel, and that'll cool you off. What happens when you bring dry ice into an enclosed surface? It takes all the oxygen out of the air, so now he couldn't breathe. So then I had to put a helmet on him with an enclosed shield and everything and a pipe that went out the top so that he could now breathe air that was outside of the vault, and then he was comfortable. So it took a little bit of time to figure all this out, but once we got it past all these little problems, we figured out that this drivable safe was really gonna help us. We knew we wanted to roll this vault and we created this bank building from scratch. This essentially was just a parking lot. Built this entire curb here, built all the steps, built the glass, put it all in there, and knew that we wanted this thing to tumble through. So what you, we had is two stunt guys in chargers, right here and right here, pulling a real vault in at speed and hitting a parked police car, just to show the immense size of this thing and get it to start turning. And when it hits it here, we put a guy in the foreground, which is what I told you about before, to give it a sense of danger. It looks like he's only a few feet away from the vault, but this is what we call a compressed lens, a long lens. It makes our stuntman right here look like he's a lot closer to the vault than he really is. But this is just the first piece of a multiple piece sequence that you'll see. So here we have our entire built bank building. What we wanted on the inside was we said we want to have a camera on a dolly, dollying past people that are inside of the bank building so that as we're seeing their faces at camera, the, the vault is tumbling behind them. The second piece of this is the vault is back here, and it's on an enormous ram that's a special effects people built for us. A ram is something that is a hydraulic piece that has a piston that shoots out, an enormous rate of speed, and creates the tumbling effect and the speed on a, an enormous track that goes all the way through the floor of the bank building so that it can't get off the track and can't hit our stunt people. And when it's sitting back here, it's on these two arms with these two holders on it that are going through the middle. As he pushes it, it starts tumbling. And as it's tumbling, when it hits the outside of the bank building here, it releases. And once it started tumbling, it's now tumbling on its own through there on the, the track that we want. So in this sequence, we were trying to think of ingenious ways for Paul and Vin's character to stop police cars coming at them. We came up with this idea of splitting and going into an alley each themselves, which then makes the vault come forward toward the police cars that are coming head on at them. The car you see here is towed in. There's no stunt people in that. The car you see here has stunt, uh, one stunt person in it with a helmet on and a full cage and everything else. See, the vault was coming in at probably 40 and we were towing in that car at probably 40 so it's an 80 mile an hour crash and then the stunt guy in the back we told him we thought this car was going to hit and the back end was going to get a little light and if you see it get light try and stuff your car underneath it and that's exactly what happened one of the key things to remember in a chase like this that every time you do a chase scene and you're going down the straightaway at the end of the scene and i yell cut the stunt guys driving the chargers as paul and vin have to stop the vault you can't just slam on the brakes because that 9,000 pound vault is going to crash into you. So they have to ease off the throttles, not even hit the brakes for about another 40 or 50 feet and let the vault take another 50 or 60 feet to you know, slide up behind them.
The biggest problem with any motorcycle stunt in any film is that you have no protection. Sure, you've got a helmet most of the time, but with car stunts, you've got metal all around you and a cage and things that protect you. On a motorcycle like this, you can only put on so many pads inside of a police uniform and a helmet and that's still not steel around you like you have in a car. So you're actually trying to put your feet on some back pegs that you've put on the motorcycle that don't exist in real life. You weld on two little tiny places where you can put your feet back there so that right before you hit this vehicle, you can push like crazy and get your knees above those handlebars. If your knees hit those handlebars, it then turns you over and you do a nose dive into the hood. So what actually happened here is what our stuntman riding the motorcycle just didn't get off the motorcycle quick enough. He was a millisecond late and he dug his shoulder into the car right there instead of turning completely over and broke his shoulder. So in this sequence, we've got a charger pushing a real 9,000 pound vault backwards out into the street with the other charger leading it. And as he comes out, our charger that's pushing it has to throw what we call a reverse 180. You go as fast as you can in reverse, then you spin the steering wheel, the front end comes around the back end, and then as it comes around all the way around, you throw it into drive and you gas it, and now you're going straight again. It's a very, very difficult move on its own, let alone pushing a 9,000 pound safe. We rehearsed this one scene in a parking lot for almost a week. So we created this entire bus stop. It wasn't there before and we built all the glass walls and put the top on it and put everything else in there and then said we're going to have the chargers split the bus stop and have the vault go through the middle. You can see that there's a big pole here and what we wanted the audience to see is that prior to this a light pole had dropped in the middle of the street and we wanted this to look like the policeman hit the light pole with the front end, it turns sideways, then the side hit the light pole and the car tumbles side over side down the street. Well, that's not gonna happen in reality and look really spectacular. So what we do underneath the car, we put what's called a cannon. So we just think about a real cannon pointed toward the ground, stuck where the passenger seat is. You weld it all into the cage and then you give the stunt guy a button and you say, come in here at speed, pitch the car sideways, hit the button, that cannon fires, shoots the projectile out, hits the ground, and makes this car flip like this. So what this is, is this is a two-part process. We were, took the chargers and ran our real 9,000-pound vault into parked cars, cabled to the ground on big steel plates so that they couldn't move. That gives us the most resistance and creates the crush factor that we want. Then we went in and we took all the engines out of these cars and cut some of the cars up so that they crushed a little easier. But then we got bored with it. We thought, we're just not getting the kind of crush factor that we really want. So, what you see now is our third vault. And this is gonna be a little more difficult to understand is we took an entire semi-truck. We took the box off of it. It's just the semi-truck tractor. And we stuck it and built a vault around the front three sides of this semi-truck and put huge steel channel all around it so that a semi-truck, which weighs a lot of weight, can hit all these parked cars and crush them and drive away from it. Now, he's never being pulled by the chargers, but we did have the two chargers drive in front of him with no cables so he could pile drive these parked cars and make them look like matchbox. We wrecked somewhere between 190 and 210 cars. You cut loose right now. So this is the 180 when Vin has to throw a 180 and get the vault to go by him so that he can then go the other direction to attack the bad guys. If he throws it too late or too early, the vault then hits him, which is not a good thing. So we rehearsed this with pylons to simulate exactly what the width of this street was 
and we got it down to, a, to the perfect line where he could actually throw it. And you can see just how close this vault goes by his back end. You wouldn't want to get hit by it. In every single Fast and Furious, we have to have a wheelie with Vin's car, Vin's charger, or whatever Vin is in. And so out here, we decided, well, how is he going to wheelie with a 9,000 pound vault behind him? We figured, well, that's the reason that will make it work is once he throws the 180 and then has to go back after the bad guy, there's not two cars pulling it anymore. So it's, that's the perfect spot to add the wheelie as opposed to anywhere else in the chase. Now, what we did was put a bunch of weight on the back of the car here and that weight sticks out a little bit and when the stunt guy gives it the gas with a 9,000 pound safe on there it drags a little bit and the front end comes up in the air. Most people don't know this but when the front end comes up in the air guess what you can't steer the car so you better be going straight. Well we cheated a little bit. We had turning brakes inside the car. Inside the car you've got two brake handles. Each brake handle is attached to the rear wheel brakes. So if it starts to go a little right, you just ease on the brake on the left and it pulls it that way until it's straight again. This is where we shear the roof off of a police car. We knew we always wanted to do this because we thought with all these police cars coming head on at them, somebody has to get forced in underneath the cable and it has to be like a guillotine bit. Well, we put a real stunt guy in there and what we did was here and here and all across here and up in the front and all across the front, cut all across there and just left a tiny bit of metal still connecting the top to the car. And then we had our tiniest stunt guy put a helmet on and test running this at the car in the cable and ducking down at the last second. He has to lay over and hide and we have a camera over his back seeing the cable come at us. And we had a pylon on the side of the road to say, you have to be down by that pylon. You're laying over about a second or a second and a half before the cable shears the car. We did it without the cable four or five times till we got the timing right, and then I felt comfortable that he was laying over early enough to ensure that he wasn't gonna get caught by the cable, and then we did it for real, and it worked absolutely perfect. We knew we wanted to have our Vin double throwing a 180 here. He can only use this half of the frame. When you're throwing a 180, it's a very tight frame like that. It's a tough shot to get because the front end has to be so big in frame. This was the frame that we really wanted, and we want the vault tumbling this direction, but it has to be a CG vault. So it's going to tumble this way all the way through our shot, and this is what he had to leave open. So. This is the only time that we really see a CG vault tumbling. So what this was, was we had Vin, real, you know, Vin, jumping out of a car on stage, and then we had a stunt guy jumping out of a real car that's being snatched out of frame very fast. We had a countdown. We had him with the door open. We said, three, two, one, go. Stunt guy jumps out on one, and on go, we snatch this car up and out of the shot like you see it here. Now the car is cartwheeling through the air, which we did on a big, huge crane. We had a, two cranes up in the air. Cranes are all off camera behind us, but you'd see the arms would come down. There'd be cables here and cables off here and cables over here, but you can't see the crane arms. They all come in from the top and they spin this car and cartwheel it and it goes all the way into there. And we knew that we wanted it spinning as if the vault, which is now in the ocean, is now pulling it toward this car. Just so you know how many pieces are in this last big crash, we could spin the car around and hit our bad guy's car here, which was a Volkswagen Touareg, but it never really hit it with the front end like we wanted. And so after doing the big spinning crash and we hit the Torog, we took it off, put a new Torog in, got another charger, stuck it up in the air and pulled this charger way, way back here on a crane and just let it come flying in and have the front end just crush all of this and then got our actor's POV for the other side of it. When I first get the script to like a Fast and Furious, 
We are starting usually three and a half to four months before we start filming. And then once we've round tabled all of the action to where everybody feels like it fits, then we have to go out there and rehearse each and every bit of action to make sure that it's safe for the crew and then safe for the stunt people and the actors. That's the part that nobody really sees. And everybody that I talk to about the show likes the part that everything is real. And if we keep it real, it makes them feel like something that they could be involved in. And I think that's what really makes the difference with you know, any kind of action series, is to put the audience in the seat with you, and then they feel like they're a part of it. And that's what makes it exciting and entertaining.